Hello and welcome to this gospel presentation brought to you from the Christians that meet in Limavady Gospel Hall. My name is Leslie Craig and this is the last of three sessions where we have been looking at the Gospel of John and chapter 3. This is a chapter that tells us about an encounter between Nicodemus and the Lord Jesus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was the most senior teacher of the law at that time. He was an old man and he came to see the Lord Jesus at night. And the Lord Jesus shocked this man by telling him that he wasn't in the kingdom of God. He first of all presented to him the need for life. He says, if you're born of the flesh, you are flesh. You need to be born of the spirit to be in the kingdom of God. We need to be born again. And so I ask you, in your life, has there ever been a moment when you have been born again? You say to me, how can I be born again? The Lord Jesus explained it. We must be born again and he must be lifted up upon a cross. And so the Lord Jesus, the sinless Savior, would take our place and die in our stead. And we, by simple faith in him, would trust him for salvation we will receive eternal life. We are born again. Have you got that life? Then the second principle that we discovered that the Lord Jesus speaks of is love. And he speaks about the love of God. What a marvelous love that is. A love that has been expressed to the whole world because God so loved the world. And a love that has gone to such infinite expense by the giving of a son to suffer and to die on that cross, to bear our sins. And a love that can be experienced by repenting of our sin and trusting in the Lord Jesus for salvation. God is the one who is the source of life. He is the source of love. And he is, in this third section of John, the source of light. Now, the Bible tells us that God is light. And light in the Bible speaks to us most often about the revelation of God, how God shows us what he is like. You know what it's like to go into a darkened room. You cannot see anything. You do not know what is there. Someone might tell you of something that looks beautiful, but there's no way of knowing it until the light is switched on. And it is through God's revelation that we begin to understand the grandeur of God. Look into the night sky. Those millions of little sparkling dots in the sky tell us of the majesty of the Creator. How He is flung out into space countless galaxies and billions of stars. God is placed in our solar system at the very center, a sun, a source of light. And as its light shines upon our world, we see the beauty of the flowers. We see the spectrum of the colors all around us. We see the amazing creation of birds and of all the kinds of life that God has made. God has shone a light upon his glory and upon his majesty. But God has given us the Bible. The Bible itself is called the light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, says the Psalms. You see, a light will show us where we are and a lamp is going to show us where we're going. Looking on ahead, the Bible shows us where we are, shows us that we're sinners, we're lost. And it shows us where we're going. It shows us the danger of going on to be lost forever, to be in hell. But the same word of God that shines the light upon who we are, where we are, where we're going, it also shines the light upon the Son of God, the Savior of the world. In fact, the Bible says, to a darkened world, he came as light. The Lord Jesus says, I am the light of the world. 
And so he came to tell us fully what God is like. You want to know what God is like? Read about the Lord Jesus. See his compassion, his love. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter what rank you had. It didn't matter how broken your life was. If the Lord Jesus met a person that was in need of him, he met that need. He touched the untouchable. He spoke to the people that no one else would mix with. He met the outcasts and he received sinners like you and me. And so as we look to the Lord Jesus, we see the very heart of God expressed in human flesh. And this is what the Lord Jesus is now telling Nicodemus. We have no idea why Nicodemus came at night. Perhaps it was out of embarrassment because he was such a famous person. Perhaps it was to get a quiet conversation. We do not know. But the Lord Jesus squares with him. He says, Nicodemus, those that do the truth, those that obey God, they're not ashamed of the light. But those who hate the word of God, they love the darkness. Now, let us just think about that for a moment or two. You see, the light exposes what we're like. I suppose sometimes you've seen a dimly lit room and it looks quite nostalgic. It's got a mood about it. But someone has gone in and switched on bright lights and then you see it as it really is, dusty and dirty. Not quite the same, is it? And sometimes we feel ourselves to be doing all right in life, perhaps a little bit religious, perhaps fearing God in some manner or other, reading our Bible, at some time saying our prayers, and our lives look to ourselves to be okay. But then if we come under the sound of the word of God, if someone starts preaching from the Bible and telling us what God truly is like, that there's none righteous, no, not one, there's none that truly seeks after God, that there is no difference, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that God is so holy and so high that even this world and the heavens are not clean in his sight. God cannot allow one single sin into his holy heaven. It's times like that that we get uncomfortable because the Bible exposes our sin and the Bible's light shines upon our hearts. But very often people don't like that and they go away. They're maybe asked to view a message like this or come to hear the gospel preached and then they go away. They don't want to listen on. They don't wait to the end because their conscience is speaking to them, telling them that they are sinners. God is light and the light of God exposes every sin. We can't hide from him. He knows all that we've done. He knows where we've been. He knows our thoughts. The light of God exposes every sin. But the Bible tells us that we can walk in God's light without fear because the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can cleanse every sin. Every sin that the light of God exposes, the blood of Christ can cleanse. And I say to you today, dear friend, don't run, don't hide. If God is speaking to you through his words, don't turn away from him. To the comfort of the darkness, don't run away from the light of the Bible. Stay in the light. Allow it to show you your sinfulness, but let it show you the wonder of the love of God that he sent his son to save you. And if you were to trust in him, the blood of Jesus Christ would cleanse every sin and you would have a clear conscience before God. You could speak to God as your father, you could raise your heart to God in prayer and know that you're forgiven and know that one day into the brightness and light of heaven, you will go and you'll feel at home there. You see, one of the things we need to face is this. So many people live as if God didn't matter. They, they live a, a notorious life, those celebrities and all such people. And then it comes that perhaps they die suddenly, sadly, 
And everyone says, oh, well, they're looking down upon us, making the assumption that they've automatically gone to heaven because they're famous. You see, that's a big mistake. If we don't live in the light of God in this world, knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we have a clear conscience because the blood of Christ has cleansed us, how would we ever expect to be in the holier light of heaven? You see, if you and I in our sins were able to make it into heaven, we would flee the place. It would be too bright, too holy. We would not feel at home. We would prefer the darkness of hell to the brightness of the glory of heaven if our sins were not forgiven. And so I want to speak to you about the light and coming into the light and facing the light and in the light discovering that God has an answer for your sin. I remember reading about the Second World War and the bombardment across the major cities of the British Isles. And I remember as a little boy uh, reading about those searchlights and how they pierced up through the night sky and they were looking for the bombers so that they could track them, that the gunners on the ground could perhaps shoot them down before they would drop their bombs. And those pilots, as soon as the light locked upon them, they ducked and they dived and they tried to get out of the light because they were sitting ducks, as we would say. They, the gunners could see them. They tried to get out of the light. I hope you're not doing that. As God seeks to shine the light upon you. Perhaps some sudden death. Perhaps something that has made you think of eternity. Perhaps the word of God that we're preaching week after week. And you're caught in the beam of God's light. Don't run, don't hide. Because God has something great to give you. Let me read a, a verse from this lovely passage that speaks to us about the light of God. I'm going to read from John 3 and verse 17. Listen to these words. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought of God. Do you love the light, or do you love the darkness? When God speaks, do you run and hide? Or have you had your sins forgiven so that you can rejoice in the light of God? And let's think of this verse. John chapter 3 verse 17. Let me read it again to you. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I want to speak to you about what God could have done. God could have kept his son in heaven. You see, he didn't have to send him. The Bible says God sent his son. Later on in the Bible, we read that God sent him to be the savior of the world. God could have kept him. There was no reason why God should give him, knowing what people would do with him, knowing how they would despise him, reject him and spit in his face. God could have kept him. No reason to send him. Have you ever thought about that? Just suppose God searched through heaven. He couldn't find one willing to be the supreme sacrifice that was needed to buy eternal life for you and me. Had it not been for a place called Calvary, 
Had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then my soul would forever be lost. God could have kept him. He didn't need to send him. What God could have done. What God should have done. You see, the Bible tells us that God is going to judge. And all judgment in this world has been committed to his son. So what God should have done is in this verse. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. He should have done that. The world was guilty. You and I are guilty of sinning against God. And so when I come to think of this verse, I think of what God should have done. We were the rebels. We were the sinners. And God should have sent his son to condemn us. He should have sent his son to punish us for our sins. What God could have done, he could have kept him. What God should have done, he should have sent him to condemn us. He should have sent him to judge. Now let me pause there for a moment. Because this chapter and John chapter 5 as well reminds us that the Lord Jesus is going to come back again. He will come back. And when he comes again, he is going to judge. That's his very reason for coming. And everyone is going to stand before the Lord Jesus. It will be too late then to get ready. Too late then to get saved. Too late to pray for forgiveness. When he comes again, he will judge. But when he came the first time, he came to save. He did not come to judge the world. He did not come to blame. He did not only come to seek it was to save. He came. And when we call him Savior, we call him by his name. Those are very simple words, but they are so true. What God could have done, he could have kept him. What God should have done, he should have sent him to condemn us. What God would have done, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The reason why God sent his son was because God would have everyone in heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, not everyone's going to be in heaven. That's very sad. But listen to the words that the world through him might be saved. When Christ died upon the cross, he paid enough for all. You see verse 16, that lovely verse tells us, For God so loved the world. He didn't just pick out a few. The religious, the good people, no. He loved the whole world and he gave his son for the whole world. And the Lord Jesus came to take away the sin of the world. The Bible tells us that because of the death that the Lord Jesus died and the price that he paid, the whole world could be saved. Listen to the words again. But that the world through him might be saved. The sad thing is this, that many people will be lost. Many people will be in hell. But there's not one of them that needed to be there. Not one. Because Christ has paid enough to save all. The world might be saved. Oh, that you would be saved. You say, so many people, they have no time for this. Why should I? Listen, it's your eternity. It's your soul. You're the one that will be lost if you turn away from the Savior. Listen again to the words of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Listen to the next verse. What God could have done, he could have kept him. What God should have done, he should have sent him to condemn. What God would have done. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Believe and live. Step into the light. Let it discover your sin. And know this, that the blood of Jesus Christ, if you confess it and you trust him, his blood will cleanse every sin. And you will be in the light and in the glory of the light of heaven for all eternity. Thank you for listening.